to talk about uh, um, evaporation. You have apples there, so it's a fruit of, uh, of perspiration, actually. So, and um, I didn't upload yet the material because I was tired until this morning, but I will upload later. Uh, okay, part is already uploaded. And um, there are a few things that are, um, has to do with evaporation and the transpiration is a very active field in, the, in this moment. And I don't pretend to give you um, a complete view of, of the stuff, just a few glimpses. But uh, I, I underline something. Uh, so first uh, I start uh, to talk uh, about evaporation as uh, 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 momentum and uh, uh, water va vapor transport in the atmosphere. Uh, in fact, the, the traditional way we have to, to treat with this problem is that uh, uh, turbulence more or less uh, decide what, what is the transport. Uh, this is, has been actually questioned recently, and I believe that the, the questions that then any are uh, put are correct. But anyway, we will move in, uh, in a quite traditional way. In, in any case, what I am showing to you uh, remain uh, fundamental in, in, the, in the topic. Uh, the theory that is on the base of what we do and uh, how we treat um, and how we treat uh, the uh, evapotranspiration and turbulence in evapotranspiration is actually not a theory. It's mostly uh, a semi-empirical work due to Prandt in the uh, one century ago. And the idea is that uh, uh, fluctuation of any quantities, which is signed by an asterisk here, uh, uh, is, uh, uh, is uh, giving the uh, transport of uh, anything in turbulence. So, for instance, here we have the transport of momentum, where we have rho, which is the dry uh, density of air. Uh, we have Omega, fir uh, omega first, uh, which is the fluctuation of uh, wind velocity of the vertical in atmosphere. And we have uh, U first, the, <coughs> the fluctuation of uh, wind velocity on the horizontal. So that's uh, the transport of momentum. Uh, if in place of U, you place <coughs> temperature, you have the transport, the turbulent transport of it. And uh, if you place uh, in, uh, in place of the, in the specific humidity, Q, uh, you have the transport of um, water vapor. Transport of water vapor uh, for us is uh, the result of evapotranspiration. Actually, Oh, okay, we call evapotranspiration because it is evaporation and transpiration. And we use the same more or less method or models to describe them. They are not actually the same thing, and uh, we try to show you a little about uh, during part of, of this talk. Uh, so these are fluctuate, uh, uh, all, the, all the points are fluctuations and all the um, around the mean motion. And the bar, the over bar means that uh, we are doing some time averaging of it. <coughs> the real equation actually is this one, is the Navier-Stokes equations, which is the translation, nothing else than the translation of uh, the uh, second Newton law in terms of a fluid and assuming that the fluid is neutral, meaning that the shear stress is a uh, uh, as a certain form is linear in uh, and uh, on the first side you see uh, the part that depends on uh, the variation of velocity which is 
uh, in the parenthesis you see parenthesis you see the acceleration the derivative of velocity uh, through time which is composed by two parts one is the direct derivatives of velocity and the other is uh, the variation of velocity in uh, in space due to the gradient of velocity in space and on on the right side we have uh, three terms one is the uh, uh, the gradient of the pressures that uh, start the motion and uh, uh, we have the, uh, the, uh, the, di uh, the divergence of a tensor which is the, the, sh uh, the stresses that are acting on, on the fluid and plus we have the external force itself so this is pretty a, a complicated equation we don't know even if the uh, solution of this equation are unique and um, uh, only only in a few uh, uh, in, a, in a few cases we know the unicity of the solution of this equation, and uh, it's actually a very complicated nonlinear equation due to the fact that velocity compare appears two times on on the first on the first member of the equation. What we did to arrive to the formulas before was exactly to decompose the velocity in the mean field of with the over sign with the over bar plus a fluctuation with the, with the prime so we the rea in reality for treating uh, the, the motion to, of turbulence we should treat this equation solve this equation with the appropriate boundary conditions we have a lot of problems in doing that even assuming that we are uh, we are able to solve the this equation but uh, there are effects that are not actually solvable because in this equation appear a lot of scale of motion, a lot of degree of, of freedom that uh, uh, challenge any co for a scene computer that uh, we uh, we that we we can imagine from here to sometimes in the future. So um, we do some simplification and uh, we say okay, but in our case we have a plane like this one uh, and uh, uh, so we have a problem with a certain symmetry we have a wind flowing on a plane we assume that the turbulence is homogeneous there is no is a, the same in all the, the, the space direction now the dynamic is stationary so we can sell the, the part of, uh, of depending on the time the and the molecular, molecular viscosity it can be neglected. Then the equation simplifies. <laughs> we try, in, in fact, with the words that I said, I was ca canceling all the pieces of the Navier-Stokes equations. And then uh, what we uh, what we assume is that the, the derivative of z. Uh, of the fluctuation of the vertical velocity and the horizontal velocity where the horizontal uh, we may be oriented in the main direction is zero which means that uh, this product is constant this is the basis more or less of, of what we, we do right now so uh, uh, and you can see that uh, from going to he from here to here, there is a, a full world of research that can, you can pursue in the future. And uh, anyway, anyway, we go simpler here, and, uh, and we say, okay, now uh, what remains of the uh, of this fluctuation that we know in a certain range are uh, are, are constant in z in the vertical direction uh, yeah we can do another hypothesis which is the what I call the Prandtl hypothesis not I call it in literature it's called Prandtl hypothesis meaning that how can we calculate those fluctuations uh, we do the hypothesis that can we that we can change fluctuation by gradi uh, special gradients some kind it, it can uh, resemble the Taylor's hypothesis, but it's not uh, the same as Taylor's hypothesis about uh, 
freezing turbulence that usually is, that is used to do the, uh, this kind of things. So uh, in this way, we have a coefficient in front, CH, CD, C, E. We have, and uh, we have the gradients here. We put also in a row the very density of air. Actually. And uh, the first is uh, the CH is called Stanton number, the second is called drug number, and the, the third is called Dalton number, because the third one is the one that has to do with uh, the equations of, uh, uh, of um, evaporation. And, uh, and uh, the gradients are the gradients of velocity, the gradient of the square of velocity, the gradient of temperature, and the gradient of uh, spe uh, specific humidity. Now we can do a further hypothesis, which is, uh, okay, all the, all the turbulence uh, uh, works the same for all the, uh, for all the three uh, transported material, which is, uh, we have the same for, um, the same coefficient for the three of them, which is actually not true, and then we will, um, but for the moment we do this simplification. If we do this simplification, we have a way to, uh, to estimate, finally, what are these fluctuations, because uh, the idea is that we have uh, the shear stress is uh, given by rho times the fluctuation of velocity due to this fluctuation, to the transfer of viscosity inside the, the fluid and then to the walls and things. So we have the tau is uh, rho uh, u first, uh, W first is a constant, as we say. We define to be rho U star square, where U star square is a new quantity that we call, that we call friction velocity, which is sort of a definition, if you want. And, uh, and we know at the same time that uh, this, this, uh, this stress is uh, rho C, which C is a uh, <coughs> uh, is a, a CD, a CD actually was there, the drag coefficient, and times u squared. So from this comparison, we, say we get that C is equal to u squared divided, uh, u star squared divided u, uh, u squared. And uh, this give, uh, give, give us uh, a way to estimate the C, at least uh, in the case of turbulence. So we have to do another uh, small digression here. Uh, how is, what is U star and U and U, how it is going? Um, actually here the variables are not exactly the one we want, but essentially we have velocity on, uh, on the uh, Y axis and we have uh, um, uh, distance in, uh, Okay, and we have uh, the vertical distance on, on the x-axis. Here, uh, is a, this, uh, this plot is more or less a, <coughs> is a log log plot first, and uh, is a, um, let's say, an experimental uh, plot uh, at the beginning. Actually, these guys here recently uh, derived the form of, uh, of, of part of this, uh, of this plot uh, using some quite sophisticated mathematics. The idea is that uh, first we have a viscous flow close to the boundary, uh, close to the boundaries, we have viscous, viscous flow, but we are not talking about viscous flow so far. This actually is really crucial in evapotranspiration because I started here uh, I started a rock directly into the music, saying, "Okay, we talk about uh, uh, we talk about evapor uh, evapotranspiration. Evapotranspiration is fueled by turbulence, but close to the surfaces, actually, the motion is viscous. So uh, we have a linear linear dependence of velocity with height. So we have this first part. Then we have a, 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 an intermediate part, and then we 
have a range which is called inertia sub layer where more or less the profile of velocity is logarithmic. And then we have uh, the rest of, uh, of the story over there. Uh, in our notation, we can write uh, uh, this law, uh, this uh, empirical law in this way, where we, uh, which is a, a relation between u and u star. Uh, we can think it to it as a, an empirical result that is valid uh, on a range of, uh, of length. Uh, K is the von Karman constant. Okay, so yes, 0.4. And uh, uh, we also have uh, Z that from here explicitly Z that is the quote from the, uh, from the plane. And, uh, and uh, ZD is the zero displacement uh, height where uh, the, velocity, uh, the velocity is zero, but uh, the logarithm profile cannot, cannot go actually to zero because log a logarithm of zero is minus infinity, so we have a we, we need to have a reference point where we have actually the, the velocity zero, which is the ZD, and we have the roughness Z, the Z zero, which is on, on the, which is this body here. Okay, so correspondingly we have U star, which is this logarithmic thing, and uh, this finally imply in the formulas that uh, our drag coefficient is made like that. We have k, k squared on the, on, on the top, <coughs> the square of logarithm of uh, z minus z0 divided z d. So like uh, Houdini here, we, we get uh, the, the coefficient of uh, uh, the, the, the drag coefficient, and uh, we have all the coefficient to estimate both the heat transfer, the, the vapor transpiration, and the uh, momentum transfer in, uh, in atmosphere. Uh, at CD, the velocity is zero, no? Z zero. I was. Uh, uh, over the top there. So uh, translating all the, uh, what I said in this, um, in the form, in the previous formula, we, that we have that H is equal to rho, the dry uh, density of, of um, air. C, which, uh, which is the, uh, the coefficient that we make equal everywhere. Cp, which is the constant pressure um, specific capacity of, uh, of air, u, which is the mean velocity on the horizontal, and the difference between two temperatures. The temperature me measured at uh, height <coughs> z0. Actually, is z0 is, uh, is zero here, uh, is what on the other side is zd, okay? But I just realized in this moment. Uh, uh, and uh, minus uh, Tz, where Tz is the temperature at 8 Z, zeta, Z, okay. Uh, Evapotranspiration transpiration uh, has a similar formula, uh, which is rho C U, and uh, by the uh, time the difference between uh, specific humidity at two eights, and finally, the C is uh, as this logarithmic expression here. Uh, in uh, evapotranspiration literature, often it uses the reverse of C. C looks like a conductance, uh, interpreted like uh, if you think of the analogy with, uh, uh, with home law in, uh, um, in electricity, uh, Physics in, in yes in electromagnetic physics, uh, C is like a conductivity and uh, it's uh, reciprocal is like a, a, a resistance, and uh, usually we we uh, we see resistances instead of conductivities. The uh, in what we, uh, it follows us 
so I will use the uh, not the specific humidity but the partial pressure which is E we have this approximate uh, relation bet between specific humidity uh, specific humidity is equal to epsilon which is the ratio between the dry air and the wet, uh, wet air uh, gas constant which is actually 0 0.622 P is the pressure is a and the denominator and E is the partial pressure of the vapor so our low is this one and this, uh, this is known as Dalton law for evaporation essentially it derived from an analysis of how uh, turbulence transport uh, the water vapor in the atmosphere without any reference on how this uh, uh, vapor is pro uh, produced that's important to remind so essentially we are uh, here uh, yes we have this law but this law uh, assume that a, there is an infinite uh, water outside that can evaporate uh, evapor uh, out of our control volume that can evaporate and give us water which is not the case actually only on uh, when we are on, on free water surfaces we, this this, uh, uh, this equation can be considered valid uh, with all the approximation I did in it. Excuse me. What is epsilon? The ratio between the, the dry air and the wet air oh. um, uh, and gas constant is oh. 0 0.622. Then in practice, uh, when we go uh, to work in practice, we uh, to uh, to come out to, to have from that formula some uh, uh, results. We have to see, say what Z D and Z zero are. But the this is zero is the two slides before, not the the last slide slide because I, I changed the the notation in the meanwhile. You know this happens. I. Uh, some of these slides I was producing in front of people at least 10 times I never realized that, that I was changing the thing and there are, there are some recipes that derive from practice anyway uh, which is Z0 is uh, equal to zero, uh, the roughness is take as uh, uh, 0 0.1 the height of vegetation so if we have uh, evaporation over let's say trees trees are uh, uh, we uh, uh, five meter high trees we have we take the sd0 uh, 50 centimeters and as zd 0 0.7 part of the 70 percent of uh, uh, 50 you can do uh, 5 meters you can do the calculation so you have the numbers to put inside the recipe to put the number inside of this so here you have uh, all, all the name of, uh, of, the, of the variables if you need some rehearsal you, you can give a look with the with the uh, disclaimer that I, I did something, I, ch I changed some, something in the rotation in between. <laughs> but the idea is that, okay, we don't really think about uh, the whole uh, chain of production of evapotranspiration. We think that uh, 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 turbulence is what control it all. And if it is turbulent that control it all, then the navier stokes is the one that used. Okay, Navier Stokes is too complicated, then they throw away all the stuff. And maybe uh, we are, uh, in this, we are helped by the fact that we do simplify experiment on simplified condition, flow of, uh, of, uh, of a fluid over a plane surface. In this case, we arrived at the Dalton formulas, more or less. <coughs> 